everybody. Welcome to Sticks and Sips. I am Frankie Dranks, Frank Moreno, Cigar and Spirit Specialist for Drew Estate. So welcome to Drew Estate Virtual Happy Hour. I know you guys have been waiting on this show. Uh, we, we're gonna, we got a great lineup of stuff that we're going to show for you. Um, I will be talking about spirits, talking about cigars, talking about pairings. I've got special guests. I've got the whole thing going on tonight. Uh, but most importantly, I've got a raffle. I've got a giveaway. I'm going to give away tonight, 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 a Pappy Van Winkle Pewter Ashtray by Subculture Studios. So let's do a little unboxing here. Get crazy, y'all. So uh, Drew State, Pappy Van Winkle, and there it is. There's the man. There's uh, Pappy Sr. smoking his stogie. Having a good old time making great whiskey. So uh, what, do you, what do you have to do to win this? Uh, we're giving away five of these. So uh, throughout the uh, broadcast tonight, throughout the virtual happy hour, I want you to uh, go ahead and ask a question. Uh, we're going to pick five questions at the end of the show. And I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, but you don't need to depend on the answer to win that. We just got to pick your question. So uh, good luck with that. Um, I keep on reminding you as the show goes on. So with that, I've got some like incredible, crazy, big, big, big news. It rhymes with big. And I believe you guys might know what these are, right? So uh, while we talk about big and we talk about pigs, uh, I want to invite a little... Uh, Somebody say something about the release of the pigs. So the pigs are back, everybody. The pigs are back in business. Check out that beautiful T-52 flying pig. You guys excited? So those will be going out uh, very soon. The Liga pigs will be going out in May. Uh, we got a big announcement coming up uh, later uh, or tomorrow. So I'll check on that. But we're super excited. Uh, Drew State pigs back on the market. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Drew, do you have anything to say about that? What's up, Frank? Hey, what's going on? Love what you guys are doing with this show, man. You know, uh, for so long, all of us, we've been so engaged with you, teaching us about booze. And when it's like National Rum Day, sitting down everybody at the office, and when you're doing your shows on the road and stuff, teaching everybody so this has been a long time in the coming, so we're really excited about it, and you're doing your thing. I'll tell you what, because we're bringing back Fly and Pig for their spring release, I was trying to think, like, tonight with your show and with the, the Fly and Pigs coming back, what would be the right booze for me to pair up tonight? <laughs> I see Isola looking, because she... I so thought... I thought so. I had a tough time choosing because this whistle pig right here, this is a 10 year, but this is a single barrel from Woodland Wine Merchant. Eh? And then the toughness came in because I got this other one here. And you know what I'm realizing? You know the uh, Bourbon Mafia? You guys know about that? This is a big shout out to the Bourbon Mafia because they hooked me up with this bottle, which you can see is slightly different than the regular because it's dedicated to for one store. So, you know, it was a whistle pig night. So, so I think that's the perfect pairing, Frank. And uh, it's exciting whenever we do stuff with the pigs. So, you know what, the, the League of Providers are going to hit in May, but the press release and stuff, you guys are getting like an early little preview because the, uh, the press release will shoot out tomorrow. So everybody gets excited with that. And, and it's the right time to bring some, a good moment. You know what I'm saying, dude? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. We're super excited about the pigs. I just got the news, you know, earlier today. So I'm like super, super excited. I would have paired whistle pig today, but, uh, but uh, do you want me to tell that story? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to save it for the day we do whistle pig. How about that? How about that? Let's, let's save that one. Cause it's a really good one, but uh, thank you JD for, for talking about pigs with us. And now, um, I want to talk about the menu for tonight, you know, because we're having a virtual happy hour. This is our virtual bar, our virtual hangout. So uh, what's on the menu for tonight? Uh, well, 
our spirit specials. I've got Evan Williams single barrel. I've got Jim Beam Black, and I've got Wild Turkey 101. So you guys got choices. You guys got choices. All right. And our cigar uh, feature for tonight is the Liga Privada T52. I know you're excited about that, right? Oh, man. And also, 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 we have uh, with us as a special guest tonight, Mr. Chris Gwaltney. So it is a super, super special night. Um, as uh, along with our raffle, and of course, what's a happy hour without some booze and, and a little cocktail? So tonight I'm making a Kentucky highball. So uh, sticks and sips. Let's get let's get the party rolling. So uh, let's talk some spirits, you guys. Yes, uh, sir. In 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 honor of the first sticks and sips, I wanted to you know pay homage to our our spirit of America. It's called America's Native Spirit. So uh, we're featuring bourbon. We're featuring bourbon, and we are uh, talking about you know what is what is bourbon. You know that there's a saying all all bourbon is whiskey, not all whiskey is bourbon. So uh, let's talk about what defines bourbon in uh, in the world here. So um, there is something called rules for bourbon, but they're really called standards of identity by the TTB. And that's really the legal definition. And you guys can see it has to be made in the US. It has to be made uh, from 51% corn. I'll explain that in a second. It has to be aged in a new charred oak bar uh, barrel. Uh, this got proof requirements and uh, it can't be uh, bottled at less than 80. Simple, simple stuff. But tonight's feature are all Kentucky straight. So what, what does straight mean to begin with? So uh, let's see what straight means. If straight defines a, a whiskey that sat in, in the barrel for a minimum of two years. Um, and if it's less than four years, it's got to have an age statement on it telling you it's less than four years. So that's pretty cool. The other part of that is like what's Kentucky straight? Part of that requirement is distilled in Kentucky. And one year, it's got to age in the state of Kentucky. So it could get moved after a year, or it doesn't have to be at the front or the beginning, but one year must be spent aging in Kentucky. So uh, as I was thinking about how to approach bourbon, how to approach uh, the entire concept of, uh, of, of thinking about bourbon. Uh, bourbon's a huge category. It's, it seems like it's only one thing, but it's huge. It's really big. And so I decided, how, I'm going, how am I going to split this up? Well, uh, I decided to go to three styles of bourbon. So uh, we have our traditional style of bourbon, which is defined by the mash bill. The mash bill is a recipe that we're using to cook up uh, the distillate. So in this case, we're using corn, uh, we're using rye and we're using barley. So those three are the recipe. A traditional style is going to keep that corn in the high 70s. So it's more corn forward. High rye means there's just less corn, but it has to be more than 51%. You guys know that part. So that defines that. And finally, finally, we'll, there's the weeded variety, which substitutes wheat for rye. And um, I can't wait to talk about those on another show, but uh, with that, we're going to sample three brands tonight. Uh, and those brands are, are done in a traditional style. Uh, like I said, all Kentucky straight. And um, while we're doing that, I'm going to be sipping a little bit. So you guys got to give me a chance to, uh, to take a little break uh, while we talk about them. And, um, and always when you taste some whiskey and, you know, I know, uh, I know all all these guys out there, they're experts. You've been tasting whiskey since you were like 14. Uh, but the reality of it is, uh, if you want to do it the right way, which I, um, I, I say enjoy whiskey how you want to, but if you want to do it the right way, you want to admire the color, you want to admire the aroma, you want to take a sip or two, enjoy the flavors. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you want to go through that process the best way you see fit. So, uh, so let's get to sipping. So, uh, what's what's up? What's the first one tonight? We have Evan Williams Single Barrel. Uh, amazing, amazing spirit made by Heaven Hill. A uh, little history on Heaven Hill as you take a look at the specs on that. Um, that's got a, 
a 78% corn uh, mash bill. So that's like the highest corn that we'll go through. These actually go down in corn from Evan Williams and on, but uh, we're doing them alphabetically. Uh, and one of the things I want to point out is uh, these, these bottles of Evan Williams single barrel. When it says single barrel, it is coming from a single barrel. This one particularly was aged uh, eight and a half years, but you may find some that have a little, uh, little slightly younger, slightly older, uh, but seven, seven plus years. And um, aroma wise, a lot of charred oak. I hope you like the graphic there. That's a four alligator char on that barrel using none of the backgrounds of that slide. Uh, just delicious. Charred oak caramel on the palate. You're getting a uh, oak, a uh, little honey, baking spices. This one has like a little like dried, dried fruit on it. So uh, pardon me while I sip that. I hope you're sipping something delicious at home as well. And you can admire uh, some of the commonalities between whiskeys. Uh, quick, quick uh, story. Evan Williams uh, basically says that he started, Evan Williams started a first distillery, commercial distillery in Kentucky in 1783, which is, wow, that's a long time ago. Uh, it's a lot of years. So somebody do the math. But uh, uh, this historical claim, highly debated, but all whiskey facts are incredibly highly debatable. Uh, it doesn't matter. The, uh, the whiskey is fantastic. Um, also, one of the reasons I picked these three, all of these three, depending on where you live, are under 30 bucks. I'm very fortunate. I live in Florida. All these are like in the $25 range, unless they're on special. And it's even less, so you can buy some more. All right, next up, we have Jim Beam Black. So uh, you guys are familiar with Jim Beam. I'm sure that you've had uh, Jim Beam many Many a time in your life, you probably just didn't know about it, but this one, um, or you had a bad experience or a good experience, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. A uh, little less corn, 77% uh, in the mash bill. Uh, this one, minimum of six years of aging in a four char barrel using the sour mash process. And that's just a sour mash, just like making sourdough. You're taking a little bit of uh, the day before its production, introducing it into the new uh, into the new uh, this distillate, oh, I'm sorry, into the new fermentation tank. So it keeps on, keeps the life of that yeast going. Um, another one that's uh, uh, sweet caramel, a little bit of toffee. Every now and then I pick up a little smoke. Uh, palette, uh, the, the, the palette on it's very, very similar to its aroma. And that's, uh, that's a really good thing. 1795, uh, the, the Beam family, uh, immigrants from Germany come over. Uh, they get into the distilling business, seven generations in the distilling business and with legends like uh, Booker No. Uh, someone had a bottle of Booker's out there somewhere. I saw it. Uh, and, uh, and Fred No, plus their family, uh, their cousins also involved with Heaven Hill Distillery. So this one's coming out of the Jim Beam Distillery, owned by Centauri now, which is all good. Still making great whiskey. And... Um, Excuse me while I take a sip. And uh, last but not least, wild turkey. Everyone's had some turkey at some point in their lives. So um, wild turkey 101, it's kind of, it's kind of the, the newest of, of these marks, but it's actually uh, what we call the standard. So mash bill, this is the lowest of the corn mash bill, 75%. Um, and then minimum of five, uh, somewhere in the range of five to eight years in aging. Again, uh, really value priced. This one's butterscotch, uh, dried citrus, uh, sweet vanilla. Again, the aroma and the palate on these are really, really similar, which is uh, like, I think it's a great thing. Uh, this goes back, company goes back 1855. So it's kind of the later starter. They were actually contract uh, bourbon bottlers, um, old rippy, started on their, uh, uh, which is a, their, their distilling, uh, the place where, where wild turkeys distilled now was the old Rippey uh, distillery in 1869. Uh, fast forward 1940, they released uh, wild turkey. And um, in, in 1940 as well, uh, 1954, I'm sorry, Jimmy Russell, which is a living legend in, in, uh, in distilling, uh, joins the company. And in 1981, 
Uh, his son, Eddie, joins the company as well. I met Eddie not too long ago. I had some underground shades uh, that he, uh, he enjoyed thoroughly, as I was told. So let's talk, about, let's talk about the perfect pairing, guys. So that's kind of where we're here. We got some spirits going. So what are we going to pair these uh, traditional style bourbons uh, with? So before we get to the concept of pairing, I want to just basically talk about uh, why, uh, how do we pair, you know? And so there's like two schools of thought. You, there's a school of reinforcement that's like layering flavor upon flavor, intensity upon intensity, uh, trying to match whatever you're trying to achieve. And contrast, both of those schools of thought create compliments. So keep that in mind. So what do I mean by reinforcement? Well, when I'm talking about reinforcement, I'm talking about you got a cheeseburger and then you put bacon on it, right? That's reinforcement. These are two great intense flavors and you're just going to layer upon layer. So uh, bacon cheeseburger is your reinforcement. So what's a contrast? Well, a peanut butter and a jelly sandwich, right? So peanut butter jelly sandwich is a concept of contrast. Peanut butter is completely unlike jelly, but put them together and they can create an amazing, amazing, as my friend Pedro says, amazing uh, complement to each other because they contrast, but together they work amazing things. Cut the crust off, kids. All right. And so what, what was it that I decided to pair traditional style bourbons with? Uh, I went with Liga Privada T52. So uh, T52, uh, stock cut, uh, Connecticut sun-grown Habano wrapper, Brazilian binder, and Honduran and Nicaraguan fillers. The body is medium to full. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people still out there asking, what's T52 mean? Well, T52 refers to the seed type used for the, sun, for the Connecticut sun-grown Habano wrapper, all right? Um, secondly, um, the concept of what the stock cut mean, right? Because you see it on the boxes and, and JD's talking about stock cut all the time, right? So, but what does it mean? Well, for a lot of you that know how we harvest the leaves from the plant, we take our primings from the plant. We, we don't take it all down all at once. We don't strip all the leaves all at once. But in this case, we are actually cutting the entire plant. So instead of like picking an apple, we're taking from a branch, we're taking the entire branch. So we're taking the entire plant and we're hanging it in the curing barn. And that entire plant, the stalk included, the stems included, um, as it's going through the curing process, all those nutrients are now flowing out into the leaves, even in its last stages, you know, it's been removed from the ground, but it's still happening. So what happens with that? We're creating these big, thick, oily, Connecticut sun-grown leaves that have, are full of flavor, that have a great texture. They have a great color to them. You see this oily sheen to them that still survives uh, the fermentation and aging. So um, I hear there's a story that uh, the JD was looking around for the best leaf in the world. Uh, they had they had they had to come up, you know, they, they hit they had a hit album with Liga Privada number nine, you know. So this was like, what's our follow up? You know, we gotta blow you know blow this out. So what was the follow up? So these guys went looking for the best possible um, leaf that they could find, and they found this T52 in the Connecticut River Valley. This is the home of Liga Privada and the blend. Uh, was just fantastic, and uh, you know, to this day, uh, that blend is uh, probably the one of the most loved blends in uh, in, uh, in 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 our entire breadth of uh, selection of cigars. So um, bold, it's bold, it's robust. It has black pepper. It has a lot of these these cedar wood oak notes. This is where we reinforce, and then when we take the sweetness from the from the whiskey. We're taking, uh, we're, now we're making a contrast sweetness and then the savory uh, con uh, type of uh, cigar that we have. So we're creating that contrast. So we're making that X and we're finding that perfect spot. So I think the T52 is a phenomenal pairing. All right. You guys still hanging in? All yo, right. Yo, Frank. Talk to me. Yo, you sure you ain't a cigar guy, like a tobacco dude? I'm not a tobacco dude. Yo, you but you, but in nineteen but in nineteen like eighty nine I bought a Rocky Patel. I don't know what that means. That's good. 
<laughs> Listen, so uh, this and that, I got to tell you, all that farm knowledge and all, all that tobacco knowledge dropping is, it's impressive, man. You kind of, you remind me, you sound like our tobacco do like hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I, uh, I was, I was hoping you'd catch on to, you know, the follow-up album line, but that's, uh, I appreciate that. That's, uh, that's, uh, means a lot to me. So, uh, so ch- check it out. Next up, now we have, uh, you know, it's going through the menu here, went through the spirits, went through the cigar, went through the pairing to our special, special guest. So I have the honor and privilege of hosting uh, a guy I truly admire. Uh, he has one of the, the best jobs in the world, right, next to mine, right? So he gets, he's surrounded by the world's best cigars and the world's best booze and and he only gets the good allocated stuff just to let people know. So, uh, but with that, um, I want to welcome Chris Gwaltney. Uh, he's the, he's the curator of the premium cigars. He's the guy that's in charge of all the premium cigars at ABC fine wine and spirits in Florida. And, uh, what can I say? Chris, welcome to sticks and sips. Good to be here, man. Thanks for the introduction, but I've, I'm a little upset now, man. You just mentioned that whole allocation thing. You don't think I get enough text messages and emails and phone calls about where's this, where's that. I drink regular stuff just like everybody thinks I just got like Pappy Van Winkle all over the place. It's hard for me to get. I promise you, man. We make, we make sure the customers get it. I, people oh, like Jonathan gets more, gets a lot more Pappy than I do, man. Yo, <laughs> I, was good. I got plenty of Pappy Van Winkle. <laughs> That's the number one question I get asked, man. It's like, Hey, you're a cigar guy for ABC. They don't ask me about cigars. They're like, how much Pappy do you get? That's yeah. like the first question out of everybody's mouth. That is very true. I've, I've witnessed that several times. It's like, hey, you know, this guy's the head guy of cigars. They're like, hey, can I get some of that, uh, you know, Buffalo Trace antique collection from four years ago? The, the bad thing is it's not just like people. It's people like Jonathan. It's all the industry people. Jonathan hit me up. Uh, uh, my friends at Roma Craft uh, always hit me up because those guys drink freaking bourbon like it's water. So, I mean, everybody in the industry always asking for it. Can you give me some Pappy? Give some Pappy. So I, I do the best I can, but trust me, customers Yo. come first. The customers come first. Yo, That is very true. So is that a plug? <laughs> <laughs> no shameless plugs. Hey, no shameless <laughs> plugs. Listen. Listen. Yo, I think you need to track that, man. I think that was – I th- Frank, you need to track I think that was a plug. <laughs> He said customers two times. I, I'm, I'm keeping track. Yeah, but, uh, customers come first, always. So, Chris, let me ask you a question, just a little, little background on, 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 on ABC, and then we'll get to you. Um, ABC started in 1936, man, so that's kind of been a you know, post-prohibition business uh, that's stuck around since then. Uh, that's, that's quite a feat uh, nowadays, like anything. Yeah, I mean, uh, the cool thing is it's family-owned, you know, going into fourth generation of management of the company. So you just don't see that a lot, um, especially in this industry. It's a very competitive industry. So uh, we've just been very blessed to have some really good people, uh, really good family members step up to the step up to the plate every time it's their turn. And uh, people I always say it, man, a CEO is worth their weight in gold. People say, oh, CEOs make too much. No, man, you, you got you got to have good people at the top of good organization. And a family business, like I said, started at the end of Prohibition and uh still going today and uh man i'm just i'm just blessed to work for some really good people that's awesome that's awesome man um talk to me about uh your journey into the cigar world brother well man my journey started as a consumer at a very young age i've always had this thing for cigars and uh i started working at abc when i was in school part-time and just kind of the way things work i just i stayed with the company i liked it they sold cigars which was awesome they sold cigars and alcohol. So when you're a 21 year old cigar smoker and you can run a, run a location that has both. Uh, so you got to, you know, basically they got half my paycheck every week, uh, going, going home with me, but, uh, no man, it's, it's, uh, I started out running, working in the, working in the stores. Cigars have always been a big part of my life. And, uh, fortunately, uh, I had the opportunity, um, to, to transition into, basically taking over over the cigar part of the business and uh, trying to take it to the next level, you know, trying to, trying to distinguish, uh, you know, there's a lot of negative stereotypes. There's a lot of great people in our channel, a liquor channel that sells cigars. You know that there's a lot of great 
places out there and is Izzy's on here and she she works through specs and you know we know about Benny's and you know there's a lot of great people out there that that uh in the liquor channel that do cigars but a lot of people the, the conception about a liquor store selling cigars is it's just kind of an afterthought it just just a few cigars it's something else to throw into the the bag to add to the ring and oh that's true we try to we try to take the approach of being a tobacconist that also sells other things so we every we always trying to add to that and you know it takes time man because uh it's difficult to build uh you know street cred in the in the premium cigar world when you're coming from our channel but uh you know we're we're doing it and uh, like i said we we love tobacco and we love cigars as, as much as we do spirits you know uh you know as you do a little you know i know we, you and i go back we uh we actually met on a cigar safari with with my boy uh rex and uh and that crew you know, and uh, and I remember I you know I had officially been introduced to Chris Chris from ABC and you know which kind of just uh, it was Brower was with us as well. So uh, Chris, if you're out there, what's up, brother? I love you. Uh, but uh, we we were on the bus, man, and I'm, I'm I'm watching this guy like you know like doing like two ligas, you know, two ligas <laughs> at a time, you know, and and he's like, and I'm going, man, that that dude loves loves his ligas. You know, so uh, and we had a good time with that. So I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think of the Perry tonight? You know, traditional bourbon, you know, uh, what I call value priced uh, with a with a T52. Yeah, I think it's great, man. I'm glad you did some value price stuff, because right now, you know, bourbon category is on fire. And, what, and what's growing the bourbon category is the top shelf, the higher end stuff. And there's a lot of people that are going around trying to find these unicorns, these hard to find bourbons. But uh, and that can be intimidating for for a new bur- somebody's getting into bourbon because they're like, oh my god, I got to spend a hundred dollars to get a good bourbon, or I'm not going to be cool like all these other people that are drinking bourbon and taking pictures of it, posting on social media. But what you what you got to find is first of all, you got to drink what what you like, and there's so much great bourbon out there. There's you know these you know like you're talking about Bean. I mean, they've been making bourbon for a long time, man. You're not going to get there's so much good bourbon under that twenty dollar price point. You don't have to spend a hundred bucks to get really good bourbon. So. Um, it's a great category and we're excited that the top end of the category is what's driving the growth of the whole business. But, you know, don't forget, man, those, uh, the brands that I grew up drinking, uh, they're still great. You know, the regular bean, the Evan Williams, uh, single barrel that you're talking about. Uh, I mean, goodness makers, Mark, you know, I think there was a, a time when I was probably from the age of 21 to 23, I probably consumed more makers Mark than I did water. So uh, well, I you know, think I, I did mean, the same, but uh, but that was last week. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So but, you know, yeah, you know, like not, I said, you don't have to spend a lot of money, man. You know, you can. There's so much good stuff out there, and there's so many, so many, uh, so many good quality bourbons. Uh, and I, I think it's a great pairing, man. I mean, I think you could just pair about anything with a T52. It's not going to bring the cigar down, but you can always bring it up. So uh, it's of course, it's a, of course. Really good pairing. So, you know, so my concept is, uh, you know, we'll go with these traditionals and try to get people to understand that there are differences between uh, the mash bills, you know, that that they're brands that that have distinctive qualities and trying to get them to understand. You know, I see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of tasting, uh, you know, videos and and people, you know, running these these tastings. And it's like they're very different types of bourbons together, you know, and it's kind of hard for a customer to really understand. So I just wanted to get real elementary with with uh with this pairing and and um and with with this style and kind of kick off the show and it will build up to those uh you know to those other you know to the higher bracket uh bourbons and you're right the category is completely on fire uh right yeah, now dude i think you did a great job explaining the differences in the bourbon. first of all letting people you know establishing what bourbon is to begin with and then talking a little bit about the different mash bills because people don't know you know people don't understand uh um, most people don't, but I will say this today's whiskey consumer, whether it's scotch bourbon there, we have a more educated population. The number of people that are educated on the, on the product is at a high level. A lot of that has to do with the, with the media. I mean, when I started, I can remember when I was trying to learn about all this stuff, there was like two or three books, you know, that you said you'd have to go, you have to go find and get all your information. And now you can just Google and you can just read you know, volumes and volumes of the history of all these families and all these people have been making whiskey. And before there was only a handful of people that were, you know, that had written books about this stuff. So uh, the information is there, man. It's, it's there, but with the good information, there's the bad information. So you got to kind of be careful if you're, don't get too caught up into what one person's opinion is or something. If somebody says something that tastes good, 
first thing I'm going to do is go buy it to try to prove them wrong because, uh, you know, look, make it a judge for yourself. You know, people always ask me, right. what's the, my rule number one of pairing is if it tastes good and you like it and don't, don't care what anybody else says about it. If it's good to you, it's good to you, man. Absolutely. And, and that's a school of thought that I follow as well. Um, you know, we can get into real in-depth conversation about how everyone's palate's slightly different, you know, and, and, and with that, you know, some people have very sensitive palates, some people have a very dull palate and, uh, and we'll talk about palate in a little bit here, but uh, that, that perception ends up, uh, you know, dominating what you see. What tastes good to somebody else may not taste good to the next person. So with that, uh, yes, JD, you had a question. No, I didn't have a question. I had the observation. What's that observation? It's about our friend Chris. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm nervous. should be scared. So <laughs> what I like about this dude, right, is his educational platforms. Every time I'm in Nicaragua, I see this guy. He's like walking down the street. <laughs> I'm driving along. Got my necklace on, you know, whatever. <laughs> I see this guy just like meandering down the street or passing me by in a car. My chauffeur will stop and the other guy will stop. And there's Chris in the back. Be like, Yo, JD. I'm like, what's this motherfucker doing? In <laughs> Every time I turn around, I see this dude. And th that's what I respect about like Chris and what you bring to ABC because they give the platform for access. But what you bring to the table, bro, is, and Frank, this is what I, I appreciate about him, is that, you know, you could say to Chris, yo, I want you to, what do you think about coming to a bond smoker? What are you talking about, JD? I'm bringing 20 of my customers to a bond smoker. I'm coming to the bond, and then he's there every single year since the year. So I think what makes this really tight is, as you guys are talking about pairings and this is and, and that, is that, you know, you guys live it. And, and I, I think that, that people appreciate that. And that's something that I just wanted to say because, you know, I think it's just something that distinguishes our man, our man, our man Chris right here, you know? Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Well, I, I couldn't have said it any, any better. So, uh, Chris, uh, ABC has a slogan, man. And if uh, you want to close out this segment with uh, what does ABC stand for? Always be celebrating, and it was our slogan before Pepsi stole it. True story. We tried to trademark it. We had it, and they, and, uh, they said, no, it's too vague. You can't put a trademark on that. We had it for about a year, and then all of a sudden now Pepsi starts popping this always be celebrating. First of all, if you're always going to be celebrating, you want to always be celebrating with a Pepsi, or you want to always be celebrating with a T-52 and some freaking whiskey? Option B. Absolutely. Option right. B. So – Chris, thanks so much, brother, uh, for joining the, the first Sticks and Sips. This, this will not be the last time that you join us, and that, consider that a threat. So, uh, so with that, you know, we're going to move on through the menu, and uh, it's cocktail time, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little parched here, and I've been talking for a while, so thanks to Chris, and thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to be making a cocktail, so uh, let's get that recipe on there. Um, this is the simplest of cocktails that everybody can make at home. So uh, you're going, this is a Kentucky highball. So the Kentucky highball is just the simplest, simplest presentation that you could possibly ever, ever, uh, you know, come up with. Anyone can make this. Uh, anybody at home can make this. And it's really not, you know, not a cocktail. It is a mixed drink. So, uh, I want to keep all my bar peeps happy that are tuning in um, just to make sure that they're keeping me straight. So uh, what, what's it missing to be a cocktail? It's missing, uh, it's missing a bitters element and it's actually missing a sugars element. So, uh, but with that, regardless, I'll be making a, a high boss. So uh, why did I choose this? Super simple. Uh, it is the best palate refresher that you could ever ever uh, imagine especially when you're having a cigar uh, we're talking about your palate starts to get exhausted after uh, having that cigar and you need something uh, the effervescence to kind of clean it up and this is a great way to do it so in the Kentucky highball I've got two ounces of whiskey uh, super super easy um, I'm going with the, with the wild turkey, and this is the wild turkey 80. So I'm going two ounces. You can go one and a half if you want. 
And then I'm going with some uh, Fever Tree uh, Club Soda, which I personally love. They make some great, great products. And like I said, uh, we're going about two ounces and I'm using the Collins glass. So the taller the glass that you can put on there, what you're forcing the, uh, the bubbles, as you guys can see, the bubbles are now rising up the glass and they're coming up and you're kind of not giving it a big surface area to dissipate. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take a bar spoon in there and just rotate it maybe two or three times, not too much. Uh, just want to make sure that the whiskey and the soda get a chance to, to blend in together. And then uh, I want to dress it up with a, with a little bit of lemon, I, I just a, a little lemon rind. You know, don't knock yourself out if, if you don't uh, want some lemon in there. It it's, works perfectly fine. Um, we can express that on there and just drop it in the glass. And uh, there's your Kentucky Highball. Nice and easy. Everyone can make one at home. And the best part of it is that it's a low ABV cocktail. So by the time that you've got the whiskey in there and you've got uh, all the, the soda, you're probably dropping that proof down. I started with proof in the 80, uh, with 80 proof, and that's probably going to get knocked down to about 10. So it's going to be like a beer. So you can keep that enjoyment going. I mean, that's really key, especially when you're sitting with a cigar. You, you, you know, you want to keep it going as long as possible. So um, let me just uh, take the opportunity to say a little toast to you guys for uh, joining me at Sticks and Sips, so I'm um, going to take a little sip, and I suggest you join me. Yo, Frank, yo, yo. So I'm getting buzzed and texted and DM'd and all sorts of shit, people looking for cigars. Uh, Chris, your place is open or what? ABC is open? Yeah, we're open, man. We're open. Uh, the governor deemed us essential, and I would agree, and I think most of the population in the world would agree that we're essential. But, yeah, we're still open, and uh, – well, you can come in the store and shop like normal. Obviously, we suggest you social distance and all that stuff. But we also do, um, you can do buy online, pick up in the store. And you can also do curbside. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't want to come in the store, we'll bring it out to the car for you. You can buy it. You can search the inventory of the store that you're shopping at, pick up, pay for your bottles, and then we'll send you a text when it's ready and we'll bring it out to your car for you. But, uh, yeah, we're open, man. And, uh, and uh, but like I said, man, we're ready for, we're ready for all everything to get back to normal. And we want everybody open especially all my friends in the hospitality industry, man. We got to get these bars back going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll drink to that. That Drink to that. Thank you, Chris. Oh, Frank, you'll fucking drink to anything. That is true. Like, what are we and to learn from? <laughs> I mean, I'll drink to that. God's sake. Rob, I'll drink for anything. <laughs> anyway, so uh, get yourself a Collins glass or a highball glass. Get yourself some whiskey. Get yourself some club soda. You can actually get a uh, fever tree uh, and Q. I think you guys can get in most liquor stores as well. So uh, while you're enjoying your cocktail with me, right? Because I will drink to that, right? That's going to be a new segment. Thank Yo, you, JD. I'll drink to that. Great. So uh, <laughs> I want to do. Uh, I want to introduce a, a little teaser uh, that we're doing um, for my upcoming YouTube show. Uh, bottom of the barrel so take it away bottom of the barrel hey everyone this is frankie drinks i'm the cigar and spirits pairing specialist for drew estate i'm also the ambassador of the pappy van winkle family reserve barrel fermented line of cigars it is an honor and privilege to represent drew estate cigar company through our rich and innovative history we truly have created something for everyone's palate Together, we will travel to different locations to experience cigar pairings with spirits, cocktails, beverages, and food. Along the way, we will explore a few locations, hang in a few bars, learn some history, and truly celebrate our lifestyle. Come join me as we embark on this journey of discovery. Cheers! Alrighty, alrighty. So, tune in. Bottom of the barrel with Frankie drinks. Uh, um, I want to thank um, my boy, the Martin Scorsese, uh, aka David Torres, for that amazing work he did filming and editing that when we were in New Orleans. Did you guys catch that, Martin Scorsese? You know, so uh, 
amazing work. Uh, we were there for the Bard Smoker last year. We shot a bunch of uh, episodes, so I'm super excited about releasing those. Uh, should be coming up really shortly. And uh, and now it's the Ask Frankie Drinks uh, segment. So with that, um, I'm going to invite others to uh, to start uh, with me as well if you want to pipe in, so I'll call you up. But our first winner of the Pappy Van Winkle Subculture Studios Pewter Ashtray is Francie Bob Ellis. And what bourbon would you recommend for a new whiskey drinker? Oh, that's a, that's a loaded one. Um, I think that whatever we featured today is a great starting point. In fact, you can even go one step uh, below that, which is even more affordable, uh, Evan Williams 1783. Um, which is actually around in Florida, I think around 20 bucks. Uh, Jim Beam White is also around 20 bucks and Wild Turkey uh, 80 is also around the $20 mark. So if you want to get started to understand before you get too complex in, in, in that bourbon, uh, bourbon world or whiskey world, uh, you can start with those. If you're interested in other types of whiskeys, I always say start, start with the baseline, start with what they're putting out into the market and then, understand what what the different categories are not all scotches are exactly the same um, not all irish whiskeys are exactly the same so uh, explore but find out what you like because some people are like i don't like peated whiskey well here's a blended that's delicious okay that's great you know so and vice versa so start off start off at that middle layer you don't need to jump into the uh you know into the super high-end uh, whiskeys uh, for your first go, because you may not like them. They may be polarizing to some people, maybe shocking, especially when it comes to proof, because I think most people get hit by proof first, and they, they, they get turned off by the super intensity of, of really, really high proof, uh, single barrel stuff that, that's coming in, you know, uh, super hot. So, uh, Francie Babelis, congratulations. Great question. Next up, I got Mark Burns. Which of the three styles of bourbon will bring out the most flavor of your cigar? Um, and to give you the douchey answer, depends on the style or the type of cigar, uh, because not all cigars are exactly the same. But I think, uh, you know, I would ask Chris on this one. Um, Chris, I think that if, if we're uh, talking about uh, a lighter cigar, I think something that's a, a lighter whiskey is probably a better way to go. Would you? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a very good rule of that's a real good rule of thumb. Yeah, could you if you don't want uh, one to overpower the other, um, that, that's definitely a, definitely the way to go, for sure. Well, uh, so and again, if you want something a little more intense in flavor, then you definitely want to take uh, you know take a step up and maybe uh, go with a bourbon. And then you know probably work your way into some peated uh, whiskeys, depending on how strong you're like to set different types of cigars are. Um, next question uh, is: it Rev Java, uh, water or ice cubes? Is there any truth that it opens the notes of the bourbon up? Uh, great question. Congratulations. That's an excellent question. Yes, it is true. Um, water, adding water to whiskey does open it up, uh, but more than likely it opens it up when it is a higher proof. When that whiskey is a little bit higher proof, you want to cut down some of that proof by getting a, a, a one ice cube in there or a little bit of water in there and letting, letting that proof come down. So if you were tasting a whiskey, you take a, <clears throat> you take a sip and try to get that alcohol off, you know, by blowing out get it on the sides of your mouth, the old Kentucky chew, and get that flavor going through your palate uh, without burning out your nose and burning out your palate. So uh, so you do that with higher proof whiskeys, you do open them up a little bit with water and Yo, with ice, so. Yo, Frank. Yeah. You know Rev Java? I do not know Rev Java. Yo, I know that dude, man. I've been dealing with that guy for like 10 or 12 years out and doing events and stuff like that. That dude's a real reverend. All right, well, Reverend Java, you got a you got a Pappy Van Winkle ashtray. I'll put it to good use. Yo, I'm glad he's doing that. Very cool. He's a all right. So, uh, next up on my screen, I got Dan Faley, F A I L L E. 
what is a char level? All right, so actually, uh, it's funny. That's a char level. So it's, it's how that barrel gets toasted and to what degree it gets toasted. So uh, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but uh, that barrel uh, gets put over a flame and that flame cooks it up um, either to like, uh, you know, I don't think I've seen anything less than a three char, but a three char, four char, they could, uh, they could take the butts, the ends of it and char it extra to interact with the whiskey even more, but it's basically the level of which we are uh, burning the wood. There's also toasting the wood, which is bringing the temperature up inside the wood at a slower rate versus like this massive uh, jet plane blast of fire, which is I think amazing. So that's what char level is. Um, and there is a, uh, the barrel works with the whiskey, it, it adds to it, it subtracts from it and it interacts with it. So there's three levels of, of char, uh, the way char works with the distillate to make the final product that, that you get in your glass. So, all right, next up, Nick Wong. What's up, homie? Nick Wong, what would you pair with a swamp rat, swamp thing? It's definitely peaty and smoky, but smooth because of the candela. Excellent question. So, uh, I'm going to say my choice. I'm going to go with, uh, with an art bag, you know, so I'm going to go with something like, you know, super, super PD. So Chris, what do you got? I'm with you, man. Look, I know the cigar says Kentucky fire cured. So you're, when you're talking about that, using that Kentucky fire cured tobacco that it obviously screams bourbon and it goes great with bourbon. But to me, bro, that KFC was made for PD freaking scotch, man. So if it's Isla, Isla all day long, baby. I don't care. Just go to Isla, close your eyes, pick a scotch, and light it up. Well, I I 100% agree with you because I think that. But it's a matter, it's a matter of opinion. That's the beauty of uh, of what we think is pairings. But but I definitely want to say congratulations on winning that, and go with the Isla. My opinion, Ardbeg, Lafroig, uh, Octomore, you know, uh, there's even Big Pete. There's one that's out there, funny looking bottle, amazing spirit. So even uh, Pete Monster by Compass Box, an amazing, amazing choice. Uh, it's, uh, that's fantastic and delicious. So, um, hey guys, uh, let's see. I'm going to take a quick look in the Zoom lounge. So, Hey, I noticed I got Rob Amato all the way from Las Vegas in the Zoom lounge. Hey, welcome to Sticks and Sips. What's up, brother? What's hey, happening, Frank? Nothing much, man. I mean, we're, we're in uh, COVID-19. We're in the stay home, stay safe mode here. And uh, I can't share a drink with you, but I can virtually. So uh, cheers to you, my man. It's good to see you in here. Good to see you. I'll just drink it right from the bottle. It's easier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do your thing, man. Do your thing. <laughs> Uh, what are you smoking today? Uh, I just finished my FSG Robusto. All right. FSG. All yeah. right. Let's see. Uh, Isola is in the house. What's up? What's Isola? up? Isola. That's Drew State Izzy for everybody. Hey, what's up? What are Cheater. you having tonight? I'm having an old fashioned. An old fashioned. That's old fashioned. uh you know, you know, you know, I would have made an old fashioned tonight, but I said, you know what, you know, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save my secret recipe for, for later, you know, for some other time. So what were you smoking tonight? I'm smoking a T52 short panatella. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you for staying on message on point. And, uh, and last but not least, I got a JD, man. Uh, what was the last thing you were drinking? Because that wasn't the first thing you were drinking, was it? No. I was, drinking, I was drinking something banging. What you know about this? I know plenty about that. What you know, what do you know? You probably know about the regular, <laughs> you probably know about the regular Breckenridge. And then like, look at Chris all smiley. The viewers can't see him all smiling and around and model and shit. No one knows, and, no, no one knows this story about, you know, secret missions that, that, 
certain people with initials J and D sent me on to Breckenridge, Colorado, driving the snow. Uh, Miami guy, fall off a freaking mountain. Thanks, man. But, uh, but in that, I got to uh, meet Brian Nolte, awesome distiller, young guy, Breckenridge, an amazing, an amazing brand. So, uh, so cheers to the Zoom, uh, Sticks and Sips Zoom Lounge for the first one. Uh, I want to say, uh, guys, first of all, uh, this is last call. So this is it, guys. This is it. You know, so before you close out your tab, uh, I do want to say, please remember in this time of COVID-19 that uh, we have many individuals and, and businesses uh, and especially in the cigar business and in hospitality that, uh, that are going through a really, really tough time. So please keep them in your thoughts, uh, support them where you can. Uh, please support your local cigar shops and liquor stores. I'm, many shops are still open uh, for delivery, uh, for curbside uh, and online sales. Stay safe, guys but you can still support those businesses staying open. In most areas, like Chris said, uh, liquor stores are deemed essential businesses. So in those liquor stores that carry Drew Estate products, you can kind of like, you know, hit them both and, and get, get what you need, you know, so you can order these great uh, spirits and order your cigars and, and uh, cause you got to stay home. And this is a great time to just sit back and, and uh, reevaluate with a cigar in hand and a drink in the other. But more importantly, uh, support those businesses. They got people's uh, paychecks to pay and, and they're trying to do the best job they can. So uh, your support means a lot, you know. So uh, as Chris said, in lieu, uh, I know that everyone out there, in lieu of your enormous, uh, generous tips that you'd be throwing at me right now, uh, throw them over to the USBG uh, National Charity Foundation. Those guys are helping the hospitality world. Uh, survive this this shutdown because you know those guys they they need our support you know we go to them you know they uh you know they're there for us when you know when we need a place to you know unwind and now's our time to give back so if you can please support that with that i want to thank my man uh, our special guest chris Waltney, for joining us at sticks and sips thanks for having me man it was a great time I, i'm gonna take a sip every time i say thanks so relax <laughs> It is sticks and sips, right? So um, I want to thank the entire marketing team, the True State marketing team for putting on, you know, so us working together to make sticks and sips happen, you know, trying to stay safe, doing this online and, and trying to get all the moving parts and pieces without being in the same place is crazy. So the fact that this show went off, uh, cheers to you guys, man. I love you. Um, shout out to Aron Curbelo and Jack Hare for making the tech work, bro, because this it, it, it may look easy, but it ain't easy. Let me tell you that. So, and finally, uh, our extended DE family that goes to all of our sales folks. That goes to all the warehouse people, all the people in the factory and the leadership team for uh, keeping the lights on, man, and keeping us disruptive AF. All right. So uh, stay tuned. We got more coming. And uh, Kyle Davis, happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday, Kyle Davis. Um, and finally, everyone that tuned in, thank you for tuning in, man. You guys are what makes Six and Sips happen. Uh, next week, I'll be, uh, I'll be exploring some Irish whiskey. So uh, tune in, join me. And with that, the bar is officially closed. Please follow us at Drew Estate Cigar, uh, Frankie underscore drinks, Facebook, Instagram. Stay home, stay safe. Wash your hands, cover your mouth. F Corona. <laughs> Cheers to you guys. I'm out. Time to light up a pig. <laughs>